trying to choose the best interior design course? Are you overwhelmed with the amount of courses already available? Have no idea which one is perfect for you? Stay with me and I'll give you nine questions you need to ask yourself before choosing the perfect interior design course. If you're new here, I'm Ula Burgiel. Originally from a small town in Poland, I worked for the top London interior design companies. Celebrity designers, luxury developers and designing homes for billionaires. Eventually opening my own business. Do remember to like this video, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Right, let's get started. The first question you need to ask yourself is do you want to be working for yourself or be employed by an interior design studio? If your plan is to start your own business and find your own clients, then doing a short course in interior design is perfectly adequate, which can be a more flexible option because you can start small in your own time. It's possible you may even not want to take any courses at all, but learn the ropes yourself on the job. Just make sure you learn the basics that I discuss in the later part of this video, points three to five. Remember, private clients more often than not don't care about any diplomas or certificates on your wall. They hire you because they love your style and your portfolio. You don't need any fancy university degrees, which are very expensive and take many years to complete. So don't be told otherwise. I talk more about this in my free training, The Six Shocking Truths About Becoming a Successful Interior Designer. It's free and the link is in the description below. The only time I would recommend getting a degree from a renowned university is when your goal is to be hired by a large interior design firm. The reason is that the competition is fierce and these firms can pick and choose from the best candidates with the best university degrees. On top of this, your design skills and portfolio need to be outstanding. I have to add that there are also exceptions to the rule. For example, when I worked for the top London interior design firms, many of my colleagues didn't have any formal education at all. So always, always, always do your own research. Look at job offers in your area or ask designers that are already employed. If your goal is to work for a large interior design studio, make sure to learn the software requirements, predominantly AutoCAD, Photoshop and InDesign. You will also need to up your presentation game. You will need to know the stages of the project from the concept design to technical design. And also who does what at each of these stages. Who deals with complicated technical drawings and arranging measured cut survey, etc. This sort of information is rarely a part of any university curriculum, but I teach it in my more advanced courses. Okay, question number two, ask yourself, is this the right course for me? There is no such thing as the best interior design course. If you Google it, you will find articles that are sponsored and it will show you the courses that simply pay most for advertising, not necessarily the best. There is no one fits all course. So. Do your research properly. Don't just look at the courses that are at the top of Google. Find different options, contrast and compare. Think about what kind of a designer you want to be. Do you want to do small local projects choosing furniture for people? Or you want to embark on large multi-stage projects that involve working with the architects, lighting designers and project managers. Is your potential teacher experienced with these type of projects? What exactly is being taught in the course? Look at the teacher's style. 
do you associate with their style or it's too tacky and outdated for you? Also, look at what your potential teacher has accomplished professionally. Do they actually work in the field or are they purely academic? Remember, it has to be the right mentor for you. So look at the reviews and students' stories. Do you relate to them? Not forgetting there are a lot of career paths as an interior designer. Just because someone tells you that theirs was the best interior design course, it doesn't mean it's true for you. So to recap, do a list of all the courses you can find and then check it against all the next points from this video. Question number three. Does the interior design course you're considering teach you about the fundamentals of design, such as design principles and rules, forming your ideas, soft finishes like rugs and fabrics, hard finishes like metal, wood and stone, color, creating finishes boards, matching finishes, and designing bespoke furniture? What about something that sounds simple, but actually is not? Sourcing, furniture, and lighting. There are many topics that are related to interior design, which you'd be surprised you never knew about. Question number four. Does the interior design course you're thinking about teach you about the design workflow? This is drawing floor plans and elevations, as well as other technical drawings. Understanding scale in both metric and imperial scales, very important for the online design packages when your clients are building a house in another country. However boring and complicated this may seem to you, it's actually really important, especially if you want to be an all-round interior designer. A designer who can not only select curtains and cushions, but can also be confident with designing everything else in the house. This is something that professional designers don't want you to know because they're worried that you will become their competition. By the way, I've put together all the secrets that the professional designers don't want you to know in my free training, the six shocking truths about becoming a successful interior designer, even if you are a complete beginner. Make sure to check it out. It's completely free and you will find the link in the description. Question number five, how will you communicate your designs to a client that can't visualize as well as you do? When choosing an interior design course, you will need to think about something that's very often overlooked. Your future clients will more than likely have a problem with visualizing your ideas for their home, even though you might think you've described everything in great detail. The majority of people are visually minded and they actually need to see what you're talking about. That's why it's extremely important that from the beginning of your design education, you pay attention to mastering the skill of presenting your ideas clearly to the client. So, when you're deciding on an interior design course, make sure you will be able to learn how to create mood boards, finishes boards, floor plans, and even 3D sketches of the rooms, which is a bit more advanced. Some people prematurely start designing with 3D models, which in my experience is a bad idea. If you want to know why, again, sign up to my free training, the six shocking truths about becoming a successful interior designer. Link in the description below. Question number six is about the budget. Can you afford it? 
sometimes the most expensive university route, which can set you back tens of thousands of dollars, might not be the right choice. As I mentioned previously, you don't necessarily need a degree to find your own clients and open your own business. First and foremost, look at your budget and see what type of a course you can actually afford. In some cases, not spending everything on education, but leaving some savings to use as a buffer to start your own business is a better idea. Because when you start your own business, clients won't suddenly start calling you unless you've had a lucky break. So realistically, you will need several months of marketing and advertising before you start making money. You will need to pay the bills in this initial stage. It's been recommended to have at least six months of buffer money. In business terms, it's usually called a runway. If you can't make it work, don't worry. Keeping your day job while working on your own business in the evenings and on the weekends is a great idea. Question number seven, is the interior design course timeline flexible enough for you? Obviously, different courses will require different time commitments. Some courses have rigid scheduling and you need to show up to every single class at a specific time. What if you're a busy mom or have a full-time job? We are all busy people and sometimes it's a better idea to sign up to an interior design course that's more flexible with pre-recorded lessons you can watch anytime. If you're a busy person with a lot of responsibilities before signing up to a course, ask if you can re-watch the lessons. Otherwise, you will fall behind only adding unnecessary pressure to you. Some courses require you to be available at set times during the week and it might be difficult to make it work. If the lessons are live, make sure that your teacher isn't in a different time zone. That's why all the lessons on my courses are pre-recorded. It means you can watch them and re-watch them anytime. Just like watching your favorite shows on Netflix. Question number eight. Will the interior design course you're thinking about prepare you for the new reality? We all know what's been happening in the world lately. We've all needed to adjust to working from home. The whole situation impacted a lot of industries which have now been forced to go through some major changes. Interior design is no different. If you want to have a chance of succeeding, you absolutely need to have a good online presence. So when you're looking at the interior design courses, Check if they prepare you to create a professional website and how to create your own brand. They should also teach you how to price the design packages that your potential clients see on your website. This is incredibly important if you want to succeed. Working from home created new opportunities for interior designers. Clients now more than ever want to improve and future-proof their homes. House, an online home remodeling platform, reported a 58% annual increase in project leads for home professionals. Now it's your chance. Online design packages are becoming more and more popular. So what are you waiting for? capitalize on it. That's another reason for you to make sure you are able to prepare amazing online presentations with mood boards, floor plans and digital finishes boards. You will find that some of your clients might be located hundreds of miles away. So make sure the interior design course you sign up to is up to date and covers everything I mentioned before. Otherwise, it's only gonna be a huge waste of your time and money. Question number nine, 
What about a license? Check if you need a license to become an interior designer in your state or country. It's not a very common thing and it only really exists in a few states in America. And it's only mainly if you want to do commercial interior design like big shopping centers or airports. So always check your state's requirements. Do your own research and if you find out that you don't need a license, then you are free to take any interior design course you like. Okay, what you should do right now is to sign up to my free training The 6 Shocking Truths about becoming a successful interior designer even if you're a complete beginner. It won't be there forever, so go ahead and click the link below. Finally, do check out my online interior design courses. My courses cover both beginners who want to change their careers and those who already have some experience with interior design but want to take it to the next level. Follow the links below for more details. I hope you enjoyed my video about how to choose the best interior design course for you. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!